milk. Day two of group stages. Uh, not what people were expecting, these uh, standings. Uh, what do you think the story of the tournament is so far? Uh, I, th I mean, Liquid is a huge story. Navi showing people that they can still win games. Just in general, that any, it's anyone's game, really. Uh, I think there's a lot of disappointed fans in, in teams like DK and Alliance. DK is slowly, at this point in time, making their way back into the tournament. I, I'm hoping Alliance is going to prove that they're still one of the top contenders. I, I personally thought Alliance and IG would probably meet in the final again, just because I feel like Alliance have that magical recipe to success. So I'm still expecting high. Uh, wh why do you think... Like, what's going on? Like, is it the meta? Is it best of one? Is it just teams playing bad, teams playing good? Like, what, why, why are the results so wonky? It, I mean, best of one obviously has a lot to do with it. Uh, meta, I don't know. I mean, we see a, lot, a ton of things. I mean, we saw Team Liquid winning with an Earthshaker solo mid. I just think a lot of the teams, are, it's going to sound weird, but they're less prepared than they maybe ought to be. I think there's a lot of mistakes happening and a lot of teams not playing to, to their fullest potential. Is there even a way to be prepared in this patch though? Can you even be prepared? It's just like people picking it almost sometimes nonsensical stuff and it just works. Sometimes teams like just not even caring what the other team drafts. They just pick their own thing and try and make it work. Well, it's all about picking your own thing and what works for you. You can't adapt to the enemy's playstyle. We've seen that time and time again. That just doesn't work. I think IG probably being the most successful team in, in the tournament so far and also in, in, in the past month or so. I think they, they proved that if you just stick to what you know and what you're good at. So they have this 20, 25 hero pool, so you can never ban out against them. They'll always get a lineup that they're very confident in. And so if you just execute the same way you do always do with the same strategies, I mean, we don't see anything surprising coming out of IG. They just play so very stable every game. I think a lot of the other teams could learn from that. Uh, do, you, do you heard about DK's ish, medical issue? They might have had uh, some guy with like headaches, and then also that they had teams refusing to practice with them. What, what do you think about that? I mean, I, I heard Lanem went to the hospital. I actually have no idea why he went there. So you, migraines. Okay, migraine. Uh, but I think he's fine. I mean, he's back. He's playing. So they're a very exper experienced team. I'm not sure that it's going to play in too much. Obviously, it's not helping them in any any sense. As far as the the practice goes. I heard those stories. I, at this point, like when I when they first broke, I was like appalled by the fact that some of the Chinese teams would do that. I, I hate the fact that you can boycott another team just to gain an edge on them in terms of practice. Uh, then, then more reports came out that that simply wasn't true. And so mm. I'm trying to just say, if I don't know, I shouldn't be commenting on it. Uh, yeah. Obviously, if it is true, it's appalling. But um, they, I know they've been practicing against American teams at least. Uh, but I don't know, they definitely don't look as strong as they did a few months back. Uh, and this time you're casting. Yes. You're, they upgraded you from analyst. Yeah. Yeah, I, they were like, this guy's, this, we're going we're gonna to make this guy a caster. I, I think it's a downgrade. I think, uh, I think it should be perceived as a downgrade. Why? I'm not the, so uh, I think the analyst desk is going to change for the main event. So they're using the same analyst as last year, only replacing me with gods. Uh, which is fair enough. I mean, f first of all, first of all, I'm not a native speaker. I have this uh, uh, supposed awkwardness to me, and <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I, I didn't expect to be back on on the panel, anyways. So I'm I'm perfectly fine with the fact that I'm replaced, but I wouldn't call it uh, an upgrade being a group stage caster. Well, casting. Well, okay, okay. I was trying to be nice. Yeah, yeah I know, I know, I know. Uh, but. Uh, I, I thought you did a good job last year. I think that Valve treating everyone pretty well, though, this time. Um, what, what do you think about, you know, the conditions, you know, the Valve production value? Is it just everything across the board better, or, or what? I mean, this is the first year where they bring in production for the actual group stages, so obviously that's a lot better. It's something we've been hoping would happen, like, in, in the industry outside of Valve, we've been hoping that would happen. Uh, so I'm really, really pleased with the fact that they're doing that, because the previous years the casters were casting the group stages from, from their respective studios. Uh, so that's a huge upgrade. Um, it's still not the main event, so it's still not the highest production value, and, and we are casting out of the Valve offices right now. Uh, it's, it's still going to be stepped up a lot, but I, I think it's really, really great right now. So what are their offices like? 
What is your experience there? I mean, I love being there. Whenever I go to, to Bellevue, it's like, hey, let's go visit the, the Valve offices. It's like, first of all, everyone knows about their, you know, their cantina where they just have everything that your heart desires. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to not eat as much candy as I usually do because I always get a stomach when I go to the Valve offices just because of how much candy I consume. So this year, I went there and I scoured around the, the fridge because I'm not a big fruit fan. Uh, and then I saw these baby bell cheese. So when I'm casting, I probably average five or six little baby bell cheese a game. What? What are those? It's like this little round cheese that you just on on. Oh, the cheeses! I, I don't really eat the cheeses. I'm not a cheeses kind. They're of pretty person. good. I mean, it's it's not your your standard smelly cheese. It's just like a little uh, kids cheese, I guess. But they're super nice, super tasty. And uh, they, do they give you stuff? Do they give you some swag, some valve stuff? No. You gotta, you gotta get like this. They have like a sentry gun, there, right? Like a giant replica. Sentry oh yeah, yeah, I'm bringing that home, but I'm, yeah, I'm not telling just that. Take it, just take it back home. Yeah. Plant it in your house. <laughs> where, where are you living these days? I'm living in Berlin now. I'm working a uh, joint Dota. Mm -hmm. And how is that going? That's going really well. Uh, I mean, TI obviously being the the main event of the year, so we're breaking visitor records every single minute. I think the, the more we, the deeper we go in the tournament, the more visitors we have to the website. So that's. I know that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. It's good. Yeah. Um, How's how's it like working with Toby? It's nice. Toby is. is uh, what, what is it? Who's 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 your direct boss? Who's your boss at Join Dota? I mean, I'm technically Toby's boss. Oh wow, really? Uh, yeah. I bet. Okay. So you can tell him what to do. No, he's get me free, some coffee. He's a free spirit, and you know he's the he's the star of the show. So you gotta respect that. I mean, he built Join Dota or helped building Join Dota into what it is today. And I came on board really really late in the process. So we work in a what I would like to think as a democracy, but I do have the final say on things. Uh, that sounds almost as if I'm bragging, right? Did you ever, uh, did you ever have to overrule someone? Yeah, yeah, there's been there's been times where you know where you have to put people in their place and and overrule them, but more like generally you have, we have a really really nice atmosphere in the team. We're we're a small team of five guys, but we then also have a we work within a company, Freaks for You. So they do all kinds of, of gaming and esports. So we work closely with our graphics department and with our IT department and, and social media department and so forth. So there's a lot more people involved with Join Dota, if not in full time. And then of course we have hundreds of volunteers. So it, it, it takes a lot to go around. But in the actual full time Join Dota office, we have five people attached right now. And uh, at looking at this prize pool and all these people playing, are you are you just like oh man like. I wish I stuck being a pro, or a little bit, maybe? Oh, a, a lot, but, uh, but let's be honest, my, my Dota 2 run wasn't very successful. I finished fourth in TI1, which was pretty much anyone's game. I mean, Navi should probably con consider themselves lucky to win that, since it was just like, okay. Uh, TI2, uh, barely, like, we didn't make it into top eight. Sort of disappointing, last year I was then an analyst, so, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm sometimes thinking what could have been, but uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with working behind the scenes instead. Any any chance coming back or no? Yeah, if Malini and Honey wants to make a team with me, I am totally back in the game. Okay. And next year, twenty million dollar prize pool, maybe. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's time to just try. Just try for the qualifiers, right? Why yeah, well, I've been discussing strategies with Hani a lot, and since he's been working out a lot... Um, he's giving you help? He's giving me help with that, but we're going to utilize his physical strength into breaking bones on other teams, okay, just so, you so can, that we stand a chance next year. Can, before, like, when, when you guys shake hands with the other team, like before the game, yeah, he'll just like, crush their hands? Exactly. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the strategy right now. We might just work on our game instead. I'm, I'm saying that as if we're playing, but if, if we were to be playing... We that, that guy's so nice. He's like the nicest guy. I've never seen him like super angry. You, no, you've it, probably it's seen funny. him angry. I, I think uh, Honey and, and Fly, both probably the biggest players uh, in, in terms of... Well, Chuan. Oh, okay, well, I was about to say in terms of body strength. I don't know how Chuan. He's really strong. Oh, okay. Well, well, even including Chuan, those are probably some of the nicest guys in the scene as well. I don't yeah. think they would ever lay a hand on anyone. You probably have a higher risk of getting beat up by me. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try to. I'll try and. I'll, I'll try and poke them enough that they get really angry. I try that sometimes. Like Honey and I are really, really close friends, and I am. I'm an instigator, oh, yeah. so I, I like to just sometimes, you know, really, really take it to the limit and see where, how much I can push Maybe if they push lose him. the World Cup, you 
No, Hani doesn't care. No, he, he doesn't, doesn't care. care at all. Okay. But yeah, sometimes I try and pressure him just to see if I can get a reaction out of him, but he, he just smiles and laughs. Generally, the, the guys that are the biggest and like most confident in themselves are the ones that are like le less likely to be angry because they just, they know. Like, like that guy that knows Krav Maga, yeah, fly. Yeah, fly. Like he's probably just, you know. Yeah. He's probably really cool until. I think what they care the most about is winning. I think that's the only thing. Like when they lose, that's when they're in a in a bad place, but not in a bad place where they would ever, you know, go all Hulk on anyone. <laughs> okay. Um, what are you doing in your uh, outside of Dota, outside of work? What's up with you? I, I work. Like all I do is work. So a lot of people don't. No, I'm not even gonna go into that. I was, about, I was about to talk about my, my second job, but I, I What's think your second job. It's 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 also in esports. Okay. So what is it? It's you know, just working in esports. I don't I don't know. What are you talking about? It's uh. It's blasphemy, is what it is. I actually... Uh, you were about to say something, and then you decided against it. So yeah, I, I don't even know. Like, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead. this out? <laughs> we, we could if you wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you what you were going to say. Oh, okay. So I'm afraid my entire Dota following or fan base or whatnot is going to just pitchfork me for this. Um, but at ESL 1, like I was saying uh, on the analyst desk then, I think we're at a point in esports where we can really be happy for all games and sort of unite and, and, and just... No, I, I understand that completely. I, I think that um, there's a lot of Dota fans out there that hate on other games. Exactly. And, and so I'm at a, at a place where I appreciate watching all games. Like, I play a ton of Hearthstone, probably as much as I play Dota. Uh, I watch some Hearthstone. It's not really the most... Exciting Sometimes games. Sometimes it is. Sometimes, but, yeah. I mean, it's definitely not. It's not as exciting as Dota or. Exactly, know, or and, and so I've uh, I've began to watch a bit of League of Legends in mostly because I run the uh, Alliance League of Legends team. Mm -hmm. How are they doing? They're doing really well. I'm really proud of those guys. Uh, so I mean, are they jealous at all of the prize pool in Dota? I don't they have a more stable system. Yeah, I don't think they're jealous per se, but they're definitely interested in Dota. And, and the funny part about them is, um, so so they watch Dota, uh, and they follow Dota some, and I mean, they follow the, the Alliance Dota team a lot, for instance, and are good friends with them. And so sometimes we sit down and play at night, and for a team that's never touched Dota before, and the first time I sat down and played with them, they are surprisingly good. Of course uh, they're good. They're pros in the game. Yeah, but I mean, if I went into League of Legends, I would have no clue what I was doing. I couldn't right. buy items. I didn't know what the hero would do. But these guys, they just, they read the game really, really well. And uh, like Fog, for instance, Fog of War, they, they, they utilized that really, really well. And I was surprised by how fast they picked up farm as well. So, you know, being a, a professional in a game that is... What many consider easier. Yeah, and essentially, but it, but essentially, really, really close to Dota. Uh, yeah, mechanic like ap the apparently whole. carries over. So just because you're a League of Legends player doesn't mean that you're bad at Dota. Well, maybe we'll see. Maybe. Yeah, I, I I imagine that if Alliance Dota switches to LoL, they wouldn't have an easy time either. It would just be. Oh no no. Yeah, it'd I be very so. difficult. I know? mean, we we I've, we've seen attempts at that in the past with some players. Uh, so no, regardless, it, you know, it takes experience to change into games. But I mean, in Dota, we have seen a lot of Heroes of New Earth players. Yeah, I feel like when when I read uh, League subreddit, they seem very open to Dota and they almost like it. Yeah. Whereas the reception on Dota is yeah, like that's what I mean. very it, like hostile. The, the whole mantra has changed a lot. I mean, okay, I did a tweet three, four years ago where I said something really, really bad about League of Legends. Called it a Nickelodeon game and Nickelodeon <laughs> game. Yeah, <laughs> okay. stuff like that. Like it should enjoy its last year in esports, I believe it was. And so you were you, you were wrong. Yeah, I was probably the, the most wrong you've ever been. Maybe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was really really wrong. And and so I sort of regret doing that tweet just because of how hostile it was yeah. and, and how narrow-minded that perception of esports You're is. You're growing that. as a person. No. Exactly. I'm, I'm getting, I mean, it, it took a lot of years. I'm 28 year, years old now, so I was wow. 25 and still did, uh, you know, something I sh probably should have stopped when I was 18 or 16 even. So, you know. Life lessons with milk. Exactly. So I grow and I would like to encourage everyone to just support all esports. Okay. Wow, but, that's pretty cool. Up, that's Evo's this weekend. Evo, yeah, okay. Watch Not any fighting games. Sport, though. That's <laughs> super boring. <laughs>
right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. I know you got a cast. Uh, so do you have any uh, shout outs you want to give? Uh, any any kind of last words? Uh, yes, I would like to give a shout out to my co-caster AC. I think uh, he's a caster that's come a long way. I remember I, the last time I casted with him is actually exactly a year ago at DreamHack Valencia. And I don't really feel we hit it off back then, but uh, he's grown a lot as a caster and he's He's really, you know, he allows people to cast with him now. I think he, he got a lot of criticism for not doing that in the past, but I really, really feel he stepped up his game and... He's also easy to cast with that because he's just really good at... Yeah, yeah. Moment, so, you know? so our personal synergy, I feel, has, has, has really improved a lot and I, I thank him for that. I, I think it's great that someone works on their flaws and I think he more than anyone has been working a lot of uh, on, on his, the mistakes that he has made in the past and, and really developed into becoming a great caster. So, uh, and I mean, most importantly, shout outs to all the teams here. I, I really I enjoy sitting down 12 hours a day and just watch Top Notch Dota and I think it's, it's like heaven. I wish we had that. I, I wrote a tweet about this yesterday. I, I wish we had like a hundred million dollar stretch goal where we could just do TI every day. Okay. Shut down Valve yeah. for <laughs> just, the whole year. Just stop being game developers and just go into tournament hosting. Yeah, okay. We'll see about that. Uh, what, what's your call out? Give me a call out. What do you mean a call out? Yeah, it's the opposite of a shout out. I don't want to call anyone out. Yeah, you do. Come on. Just one. Just one person. No one? No one you can't think of anyone? Dude, I'm, I'm normally always such an asshole, okay. but I can't think of anything. You literally about. can't think of anyone. What about Demon? Call him out. No, because he's doing so well and he's being so nice because he's in a good mood. Can be like. Okay, I'd like to call all sore losers out. Okay. Don't become an asshole just because you're losing. Moon, moon meander. <laughs> wow, I didn't say that. <laughs> I don't even know that guy. I just saw the. I just saw the tweets. That was all him. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for the interview, and we'll uh, we'll see you. You know, we'll watch your casts. Hopefully, you get to cast some some games. You I want got to some cast. really good games actually. I think uh, Melina drew the short end of the stick in terms of. I mean. All all the games are great, obviously, but you know, there's some teams that are more interesting to watch than others, and, and some of the higher quality games. So I think, I think I, I was a bit lucky with the games I got. Okay. All right, so hopefully that continues. We'll see you in the casts, yeah. and you know, next time.